Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman. This is another episode of Azure Friday. I'm here with Matthew Henderson. We're going to talk about the Microsoft Graph within the context of Azure Functions. Yep. Very cool. It sounds like Azure Functions is getting all kinds of new functionality. Sure is, yeah. Um, you know, one of the things is that uh, Functions is a really nice programming model in addition to being a serverless abstraction. So you're not worried about infrastructure, but you're also not worried about going and fetching data from various sources. You just react to events, get your data, and run your business logic. So if you're plugging the Microsoft Graph into Azure Functions, what was preventing me from doing it on my own before Absol with the SDKs? Absolutely nothing. We just made it a lot easier. Okay. Um, so now you're able to go in and actually just get to your data directly um, and start working against it. Okay, so, so before in Azure Functions, I could bring in different NuGet packages and libraries and hook that stuff up. You've removed all of that friction. All that friction. You don't have to write any auth code, which is a big win. Um, so That's cool. Yeah. So That's we'll most of my code. Exactly. Um, so we'll just kind of get you plugged in and ready to go. Cool. Let's see. Let's yeah. Out. So um, first, we'll just actually take a look at a simple function that's going to uh, read from Excel. So um, all I've done is in my code, I reference a string array array, and that's going to be my grid of Excel uh, table data. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to just uh, build a quick uh, table of it, you know, tab delimited, um, and return that to an HTTP response. So just a simple little API that reads in that data and then spits it back to me. So where is the Excel data, like where's the Excel file live? So that is going to be in my OneDrive. So I've got a nice little folder here at Azure Friday and then this script uh, XLSX. So um, then I just have a simple table here which talks about some of the bindings we'll be going through okay. and then we'll actually pull that through. Interesting. I'm just my brain is kind of spinning with the possibilities here. Yep. So how often have we found ourselves with like I I need a little database or a little file, just a little something small. Mm -hmm. I need a little occasionally running program. Where are these things going to live? I just kind of need a function that does it, yep. whatever it is, to run occasionally. I don't really need a database. This is that problem right there. Yeah, I mean, and there's a couple different ways you can look. I mean, you can look, look at a individual table, or you can have, you know, more of a general purpose API that does some interesting thing to some table that somebody specifies. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to like, build a, an Excel extension, this would actually be a really nice way of doing it. Okay. When does this function run? Like, what is the trigger? So in this case, I've just built an API so that we can kind of uh, do it on the fly. Mm -hmm. um, so if we take a look at the just integration real quick, um, all it is is the standard HTTP trigger, which is classic for functions, mm -hmm. if it loads. Okay. So HTTP trigger, like someone just calls it whenever they feel like. I can push a button, I can put it in a web page, I can call it from back end. Exactly. Um, and then I have this new Excel table uh, set of data. So um, with that, I am specifying that, we'll just actually look at the raw view here. I'm specifying that I'm actually going to get some parameters from the request. So mm -hmm. we're going to figure out which workbook and which table. So that's, again, that dynamic API. And then I'm actually going to be grabbing the identity from uh, the calling user. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I've actually logged in to, um, we're actually going to log into the uh, function app itself. Mm -hmm. And then we will, um, use my current identity. So um, the way this works is the same authentication that you have in app service. Mm -hmm. So um, there's this handy little endpoint slash dot auth slash login slash AAD. And I'm actually prompting con for consent because we need to get all those permissions to the graph. The mm -hmm. user has to say, hey, you're allowed to read my Excel files. So I'm going to log in real quick. And we'll see that prompt. I actually requested a bunch of permissions for the various demos we're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then graph-friday, that's the name of your website. Exactly. Okay. So now I'm just going to be calling this API. We're going to give it that workbook. Uh, so it's going to be in the Azure Friday folder. Uh, and the table is going to be the table one, good old default in Excel. Mm -hmm. So we should see. So you're going to load it up, get it out of OneDrive via the graph, mm -hmm. traverse it, inside of, because it's being pushed into an Azure into an Azure function as an array of array of cells. Yep. And then you spit it out. Yep, just spit it out. Not the prettiest formatting. We can work no, but you're that, proving but. that you're able to <laughs> manipulate and, you know, and, and access that from a function with minimal effort. Yeah, and the choice of string array array was just something that I you know, chose for this example. Um, I could have done a list of POCOs and had each of those types just represent a row. Really? Um, how would the binding, how would it know to model bind to those? So that's part of the way that, or that's one of the powers of the uh, functions framework is that all these type bindings come with these uh, different data sources. Um, and the nice thing actually is about the um, this graph binding set is that it's one of our first extensions. 
Um, so we're actually making an extension framework so that people can actually write their own bindings. Um, so you can sort see how that's defined basically within the extension config. You basically just say, add this type. And you know, if there's any clever model binding you need to do, you can. But um, it's very easy to kind of just add these different types to uh, each of these integrations. That's really nice. OK, so there's Excel. What else do you have? Yeah, so uh, we also have something like OneDrive. Um, so again, um, uh, in that case, I was reading data. We also want to show acting on data. Mm -hmm. um, so in this case, again, another simple little API, but we're going to call uh, the OneDrive APIs to create a new file, and we're going to give it some text that I specify in the query string again. So uh, once again, we'll grab the URL. And here, I'm just you know, doing a byte array um, and collecting those as we, uh, as we complete the function. Mm -hmm. It's a little more low level to get the byte array of the file. Exactly. So uh, we'll go ahead and specify the file name. Uh, let's say demo.txt. You misspelled the file name. Oh, look at that. This is also my problem with functions. For some reason, for as long as I've worked on that product, I cannot spell it. Uh, type it, rather. Um, it's all good. Uh, so you can work on anything. Like you're not just Office files, any kind of file. Yes. Graphics, whatever. Yeah, so this is just a simple .txt. Okay. Um, so that returned correctly because I just specified a void. So if we head over to OneDrive, we should, if we refresh it. Hmm. Debugging time? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so uh, let's see what we have going on here. Uh, so I should have been grabbing the text parameter. Um, the function did run, so it claims that it did something. So you say await. Add async, so you're adding the file async, and then you say data, which is reg.query. So you're pulling yep. text out of the query string. Let's Maybe put something in the query string. Uh, did I not? Text equals foo. Yeah. File what? name equals demo.txt. Maybe hit refresh. Ah, uh, I know why, because it's not in my Azure Functions folder, or my Azure Friday folder. Ah, there you go. It is there, it's just in the wrong folder. Yep, and I don't want to show you the root of my OneDrive. <laughs> so. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> so let's. Uh, Try that again. There it is. Look at that. So some of these things are a little bit faster than others. So one of the things we didn't do that was is very fast. Well, that one is, um, but something like updating an Excel table and then reading that update mm -hmm. actually can take a little while. Yeah. So there are some uh, trade-offs there. One of the nice things is there's a webhook framework, so you'll be able to actually react to events, so you don't have to um, Pull. kind of guess. Yeah. So that's um, one of the nice things about the graph, and it is limited to a certain set of objects today, yeah. but growing quickly. Well, one of the things that I would want to do would, 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 would one of the things I would want to do would be to react on it and maybe get email or send email and let people know that something has changed exactly. or something has happened. Yep. Um, so sending a notification through something like Notification Helps would also be really good if you wanted to build yeah. an Outlook client or something. Push it out to a mobile app. Yep. Um, so uh, I'll show you the webhooks actually just a second, but first I wanted to show one more thing, which mm -hmm. is um, you know, we had dedicated integrations for Excel. We had dedicated integrations for OneDrive, but we don't cover the entirety of the graph, especially as the graph keeps growing. Mm. Um, we're going to try and you know, address that gap. But um, if you want to do anything generic, we can just handle the token for you. So we can just give you a, here's a token to the graph as a string attached to an API or, uh, the call that you're going to make, and off you go. I see. So you handle the auth and that kind of sticky bits, and then yeah. you hand me the graph, and then I go from there. And so this is the core of all of these. It's just you know, exposing the more raw abstraction. Um, so in this case, I'm just grabbing a string token, spinning up a new HTTP client, adding it to the bearer header, and then calling uh, one of the me endpoints. So it's going to grab my f uh, user photo. So we'll go ahead and grab this one. And since the graph is very restful, it doesn't, it's not that scary. You can really traverse it and just talk to it. It's a big, giant graph full of all the different things about your experience in Office. Yeah, and it's actually really easy to play around with. They have a graph explorer, actually, in the documentation. That's fun to play with. And so we got my photo back, which is great. Um, but yeah, if anybody wants to try uh, the uh, Graph Web app, they have uh, this nice explorer which lets you just try out different endpoints. Mm -hmm. um, you can even log in to try them against your directory. Uh, but the idea is, you know, it'll help you build your queries much easier so that when you do something like I just did, where you have kind of the query as a raw string, um, it's much easier. So that's a useful tool. Very cool. So what we're going to do next is uh, do those webhooks. Yeah, let's do so it. this one's always fun. Um, I had my background in the mobile services product, and so this reminds me of all of my notification hubs demos because you're always waiting for that event to actually come through. Mm -hmm. um, but the setup for this is actually quite complicated in terms of when you do a graph, you have to uh, when you do graph webhooks, you actually have to create a subscription. So you'll dynamically go to the graph and say, "I would like to be notified." 
So that's one function that we're going to need. Then we need a function to actually handle it. And if we were building a real application, we'd want to actually build logic to go and refresh that subscription because it expires in less than three days. Oh, wow. So you kind of have to keep it alive. Mm -hmm. um, but we've got it down to just three functions. I think when we were originally prototyping it out, it was like something like seven or eight. Mm -hmm. um, so much simpler now. It makes sense, though, logically. Yes. So um, we're going to uh, first have an API that actually subscribes uh, for the webhook. Uh, we'll go ahead and call that. And then uh, when, I, yeah, well, let's just go do that now. So create the subscription. Yep. So this actually goes and says, hey, I, Matthew Anderson, am registering for whenever a, um, specifically what we're registering for is whenever I get an email. Right. Um, we're going to send a notification. Okay. So if we jump back oops, um, and take a look at the configuration for that, again, we have the identity coming from my request, and then we have some specifics to the graph uh, subscription endpoint. So we're saying, hey, this is where we want to do our, um, we want to listen to all my messages, mm -hmm. create or update it. And then we jump over to this handler, and this is what's going to actually receive so the message. So if it has the subject Azure Friday and it's from yourself, yep. then you log that you saw that. Exactly. Um, and specifically note that we're using a graph SDK type. So again, we have these type bindings, which are quite powerful, and you can use everything that you have in the graph SDK as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a, an email set up for myself. Um, we can give it a quick hello from Azure Friday. Send that off. And what we should see is the body get uh, logged to uh, the console here. Um, and again, this is one of those nice, aha, there we go. Um, so yeah, we see that it actually processed twice. Um, looks like I may have registered uh, in setup. So I have two, uh, two webhook calls getting made. Right. It looks like you, yeah, you called create twice, so yeah. you have two notifications for yep. it. And you can easily debounce that if you need to. Exactly. So, but yeah, that comes through. Very cool. So you've got web hooks. You've got the ability to act on them and do whatever you want. You've got subscriptions and notifications. That could have been an email. It could have been a note off to, uh, it could have started another process or fired off a flow or fired yeah. off another function. Exactly. Really, the whole the world is your oyster. Yeah, so these are just building blocks. We want to get people to get started, get feedback on what scenarios they want, because, again, we've limited to the office scenarios to start. But yeah, there's a lot of power here. So where do they go to sign up and use it today? So you can just go into functions.azure.com. Um, if you go into uh, the 2.0 preview, which is built on .NET Core, um, we'll actually have instructions for you know getting everything started with extensions. Very cool. All right, I am learning all about Azure Functions and the new Microsoft Graph bindings here on Azure Friday.